Hey guys, welcome to the 41st C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the binary reader class. So, all you're going to need for this tutorial is two buttons an open and a read button. And also, you're going to need a text box. So, once you have those on your form, just double click on the read button. And as you can see right here, this code, um, it just uh, creates a new open file dialog and it will check to see if the open file dialog or if the user actually opens the file. If they do, it will enable this uh, read button right here and then it will set this string path equal to the path of the file that the user opens. Alright, so once you have that typed out, make sure that you have the using system.io up here because uh, the uh, binary reader is in the system.io namespace and we need to be uh, referencing it. So once you have that all ready, you're just going to want to type out binary reader and you can name your binary reader anything you would like. I'm just going to call it uh, BR for binary reader and then set it equal to a new binary reader. And it calls for a stream right here. So we're going to have to do file.openread and then we're just going to um, type uh, the path, or the path to the file that um, and the path to the file that we opened in the open file dialog. So once you have your binary reader typed out here, we can um, use the binary reader or read something. And the first method in the binary reader that we're going to be looking at is the read characters. All right. So basically, what the read character method will do is it will read a character um, from your file. And since we haven't specified a position in our file to have it be reading from, it's just going to start at zero. So it'll just read this first character right here. It'll read this C. So we're going to have it read this character into the text box so that we can um, view this uh, character and make sure that it's reading properly. And since this method returns a character, we're going to have to use the dot to string method so that um, it will convert it into a string. And then we're just going to want to dispose of our binary reader so that um, we don't get that, we don't get an error saying like file already being used but in the process. So once you have that all typed out, just go ahead and debug. And as you can see right there, the read button is disabled and until we open a file, it will be disabled. So now that we open the file, we can now read the file and we should just be reading this uh, C character right here. Yep. And say we want to read this A character right here. Well, we're just going to have to tell the binary reader to read at this offset 1, 0. So we're going to go up here and we're going to say br.basestream.position equals um, the position that we want it to read from. And don't get mixed up here. This is in uh, hexadecimal, not decimal. So this isn't 10, this is 10 in hexadecimal. So we're going to have to do 0x10 um, because this will represent that it's hexadecimal. So now we should have it read um, A when we click this button. Because it will first, it will navigate to this position and then it will read this A character, or read one character. So now when we click read, we should just get A. Yep. And if you want to read multiple characters, like say we want to read um, Adam right here, or Adam, then we can do um, the read uh, characters method. And this will uh, return a character array. So instead of setting, just doing like a dot to string here, we're going to use a for each statement to go through each of the, um, to go through each of the characters in this character array. And then we're going to print out each of the characters in this character array into our text box. Um, okay. Oh, and we need to specify how many characters we want it to read. So, say we want it to read like four for Adam, so we're just going to put a four in here and it will read four characters. So it'll put four characters into an array and then it will loop through it each time or for each character in the array, it will loop through it and then print it into the text box. So now, when we debug here and open this text file, we should get um, Adam in this text box. Yep. And the last thing I'm going to show you is how to read um, numbers. 
So say you want to read uh, just this uh, 0, 1 right here. And we'll read it as an 816. So we'll start right here. So we're going to go ahead and do br.read um, int 16, or a short. And then we're going to have it read it into a text box. And then we're going to have to use the dot to string method to convert it into a string. And then we're going to put x in here so it will be an hexadecimal. And since the position of this is um, 1e, we're just going to have to put 1e right here. And this is a 16-bit integer, meaning that it's two bytes. So we're going to have to start one byte ahead of here. So we'll read these two bytes, and we should get one in this text box. Well, at least that's what you think. You think that you get one in this text box, or 0001. Well, actually, we're going to get 100. And that's because the binary reader defaultly reads in little endian byte order, meaning that it reads from the right to the left. So it read 0, 1, and then it read 0, 0. So it got 1, 0, 0. And this is called, again, little endian byte order. Well, we want it to read in big endian byte order, meaning it reads from the left to the right. And there's no easy way for it to do that. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to reverse it so that it will read in the correct order, or it will read it to you in the correct order. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, like I said, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to read it in the correct order. So see you guys.